in the Fave Steel video series, we did start to cover how we construct some simple sets of constraints to our problems. But those constraints that we constructed were just that, they were simple sets. In more complex problems, constructing constraints can start to become a little bit tricky. So we need to have a new way that starts to simplify constructing more complex sets of constraints. For example, if I have the problem here where I'm an athlete and I've got a choice of two different brands of food to consume each week. Now I'm going to have a set of dietary requirements if I'm an athlete. So let's compare these brands. Let's pretend that power grain contained 30 units of carbohydrates, 30 units of protein and 100 units of uh, vitamins. And let's pretend that Super Elite contained uh, 10 units of carbohydrates, 30 units of protein, and 200 units of vitamins. Now, my dietary requirements might be to have at least 170 units of carbohydrates and at least 1,400 units of vitamins. But I might be restricted on the number of protein that I can have. And I might not be allowed to have any more than 330 units of protein. Now, that's a lot of information there. And if we were to try and start constructing constraints straight from this, it's possible, but it's very difficult. So we need a way that we can visualize or represent our information or manage our information for us to make it easier to handle. And a table can be very useful for that. So in this table, if we're constructing it, the first little column that we're gonna have is to break down the different products that we have. So we're dealing with food here. And the types of food that we have are power grain and super elite. But we also have another constraint, that total required that we have to have in our diet. So I'm gonna also include that here. And then, we need to break down the following information. We need to analyze our carbohydrates. Our proteins. Our vitamins. And we also need to look at the number of cans of each that we require. So now that we've constructed our table, we need to fill out our table by using the information we've got represented here. So in this section, we want to list out the carbohydrates in each product. So in power grain, the units of carbohydrates that power grain contains is 30. And for super elite, it contains 10 units. Then we look at how many do we need of carbohydrates. Now our problem here, it says that we need at least 170 units of it. So that means we need to have equal to or greater than 170 units. We then do the same with protein. Now both Power Grain and Super Elite have 30 units of protein, but we need to look at how much is total needed. And it says that we can't have any more than 330 units. So that means it's got to be equal to or less than 330. Then the same for vitamins. Power Grain has 100 units of vitamins. Super Elite has 200. And in this case, we need at least 1,400 units. So it's got to be equal to or greater than 1,400. And finally, we've got to look at the number of tins. Now here, we've got to define our variables for it. So for power grain, I'm going to use the variable x to represent the number of tins. And for super elite, I'm going to use the variable y to represent the number of tins. Defining our variables is a very important step within the problem. So now, over here in this table, I've taken all the information out of our problem and summarized it nice and neatly. So I can actually take this information away now and let's start breaking down the constraints that exist within our problem. Now, the first constraint that exists is the number of tins. You can't have a negative number of tins. You can have zero, you can have greater than zero, but you can't have a negative number. So our x has to be equal to or greater than zero 
and our y has to be equal to or greater than zero. That is our first set of constraints. Then once we've got our first set of constraints here, we need to start breaking it down by column by column. So the next thing we need to look at is the total carbohydrates. Now to work out how many carbohydrates you would have in total, you would take the amount of carbohydrates in power grain, so 30, and multiply it with the number of tins, which we've represented here with our x variable, so 30x, you would add that to the amount of units of carbohydrate in Super Elite, which is 10, and multiply that by our variable, the number of tins, which is y. And then we look at what is the total requirement? In this case, we've got to have at least 170. So when we do this, this has to be at least 170 or greater than 170 units. So what this gives us is a constraint for the carbohydrates. We then repeat the same for protein. To work out protein, it's going to be 30 because there's 30 units in power grain multiply by the number of tins of power grain, which is x, add on the 30, because there's 30 units in super elite, multiplied by the number of tins, which is y for super elite, and the requirements of protein is it's got to be no more than 330. So it's got to be equal to or, th uh, or less than 330 units. Then for vitamins, we do the same. It's going to be 100 units of vitamins multiplied by the number of tins for power grain, so 100x, add on with the 200 units of vitamins for super elite, multiply the number of tins that we have, so 200y, and we've got to have at least 1400, so it's going to be equal to or greater than 1400 units. And what we've now done is we've used this table to help us define where the feasible region or the feasible solutions exist within our problem. And we can now go ahead and graph this, which is what we're going to do in our next video.